welcome back to the Burnout Educator. I'm Ryan Savage, the Burnout Educator, and here's our co-host. Hi guys, Olivia Willoughby here. Awesome, so good to see you tonight, Olivia. Yes. And we have an interview tonight. I'm so excited about that. Super pumped. Yes. His name is Mark Simmons, and Mark Simmons has worked uh, in Springfield Public Schools now for around a decade, yes? Mm-hmm. Yes, here yep. in town. And uh, he and I met like my first year or second year at Parkview, mm-hmm. and uh, when you know, when we were talking about this podcast from the very beginning, there was a very short list of people that I was interested in talking to. And the list has grown since then. But Mark, you've been on that list from the very beginning. Man, that's special. That makes me feel special, man. <laughs> I'm over here smiling. <laughs> that's my that's my hope, man. I want you to know how much like just how exciting this moment is for me. And I'm super excited to get to share this story, not only with you, the listener, but also just with Bridger and Olivia in the room. <laughs> yeah. Like uh, this conversation is is just is uh, had a lot of anticipation coming up to this moment. Man, man, you're gassing me up, man. I appreciate <laughs> it, though. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Likewise, likewise. You know, I, I you know throw it back to you, man. You're one of my men- greatest mentors, man. You know, both professionally and personally. So um, anytime you need my help, I got you. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. I'm excited. <laughs> Thanks. We had the opportunity to work, like, in these funny paths, like, mm-hmm. throughout. And uh, it was always these moments of, like, oh, wait, you're here, too? Yeah, you're here, too? Okay, maybe we should sit by each other, right? Like, that moment. <laughs> yeah. And uh, then there, the last couple of years that I was at uh, Pershing, um, he, Mark was my process coordinator. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, for, for those who have different language for what that role is um, in, in the district we were, that I was working in, that is the, the person that supervises the paperwork and then also makes sure that the goals are being met and facilitated appropriately and so on and so forth. Oversight for special education, basically. Yep. Yeah, that uh, goes into... Yeah, I'm, yeah. I would invite you to talk more about that too, for yeah. sure. But yeah. um, it was like having a right-hand man, seriously. <laughs> like... Yeah. No better asset than Mark Simmons <laughs> in the special education department. So, oh, man. but That's I don't want to tell any more of your story, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, today we're here to hear about Mark Simmons All right, and, uh, you know, in, in the like kind of construct and, and context of this podcast, it really is like we, yes, we have some questions prepared that can guide the conversation, mm-hmm. but we're also open to just exploring like everywhere and anywhere that the conversation goes. Okay. And so whatever you feel comfortable with sharing, we would invite you to share. Spicy. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. I'm down with that. Awesome. So, I mean, an easy place to start is why did you choose education? Um, for honestly, I didn't, if I'm being completely honest with you, um, when I was in high school, one of my friends, his twin brother, um, was a student with autism and we worked together at a bowling alley in, in high school. For like and employment for employment okay. and um during that time like he just struggled a lot and i was always the person that wanted to like help him out and do everything okay. so kind of going into my senior year i was like man i think this is actually kind of cool but you know i know teachers don't make much mm-hmm. and <laughs> at the time my other two of my other best friends we were in marketing class and we were talking about what we were going to do post-graduation yeah and so I said, you know, I'm going to do like two things. I'm going to go to school. I want to give education a try. Actually, I'm going to give human resources a try. Okay. Okay. <laughs> because that was kind of the track that we were all, you know, professionally thinking about doing. Um, but I said in the back end of it, I wouldn't mind teaching as well. Uh-huh. And so I was doing the two part. Okay. And so um, both of them went off. One went to Purdue. One went to um, Northwest, Northwest Missouri State. And um they both got their degrees. And then for me, at the time, I was at OTC. Okay. <laughs> and I didn't get into the COBRA program, the business program um, at Missouri State when I graduated with mm. my associate. So okay. I said, plan B, which was okay. education. Uh-huh. Um, and so at that point, I had already began to work for a company here, local company here that worked with adults with disabilities. And so okay. um, I planned on just kind of navigating and seeing what that was about. Uh-huh. And so can I stop you real quick? Yeah. And I, I'm just needing some context. Like yeah. in what state were you in high school? Like there's Oh, things- sorry. Yeah. 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 Like no, I-, I went to Waynesville high school. Waynesville. Okay. Um, I'm a military brat. So for those who don't know, um, yeah, I grew up all over the place. I'm also a product of the foster care system. 
Um, but okay. I do have a very loving father that um, took took the place uh, um, and came back in at a time of our lives, my siblings and I, and made sure that he was the mm-hmm. one who was going to raise his children. So, um, yeah. So we lived in California, and then I moved here, okay, um, or to Waynesville, where which is where Fort Leonard Wood is located. Uh-huh. And um, I finished out high school there. So, so Mark, I'm feeling a lot of connection with you <laughs> because uh, I also uh, am the product of moving around in yeah. the military. My dad was in the army, okay, um, my whole life, and so I would love to just hear a little bit more about the places that you've lived yeah. and any amount of that experience, if if mm. not just. At yeah. least, you know, stating where it is because people will be like, oh, yeah, you moved a lot. But yeah. as soon as you said that, this feeling in me was just like, oh, I have a friend in the room who yeah. understands. <laughs> yes, you know, you know, you know. You know. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of crazy, you know, um, for someone who's used to moving around so much. I've been in Springfield <laughs> a very long time, um, really long. Um, but yeah, we've lived, I've, well, I've lived. Um, hands down, the best place was Germany. Okay. Um, we lived on <laughs> three different uh, bases. In and, Germany? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Dang. And on t- in two of the bases, my mom and my dad were like, I don't know what you call them. Like, they were like these huge apartment complexes, and you had to have a family, like, manage the building or something okay. like that. Um, so we had this big old play area that was like on the top level of this apartment what? complex. What? That's amazing. In what city? And this was in uh, Wiesbaden. <laughs> and how old were um, you? I, I was like, oh gosh, we were in Germany from, I think, like kindergarten to second grade, I think. Oh yeah, um, so your child like, brain was just running yeah, wild. Those <laughs> were like the best memories yes. that I have. Oh, like man. When I think about my childhood... I really think mostly about Germany. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. And then, obviously, um, the Virgin Islands, Ryan, you know, that's where I'm from. Uh-huh. Um, but, yeah, Germany, hands down, was, like, the best. I found out I was allergic to bees and grass oh. and pollen oh. um, <laughs> all in the same, uh, all at the same time because I got stung by a bee. i um, actually fighting my youngest brother over my toy vehicle, you know, like the... Um, what were those things called? Like the CarPlay, mm-hmm. whatever. It was like a red Corvette. And he had like a pink motorcycle or something <laughs> like that. You know, it was like what our parents could afford. You know, they were raising yep. six children. You know, wow. my dad was, I think, probably at that time, like an E2 maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, so not a lot of money, you know, for mm-hmm. raising six children. Um, so we really got whatever we could, you know. And so my brother didn't want that because it didn't look as cool as mine. And so I kind of like pushed him away. Um, my shoe fell off my foot and I went towards like the sand or something like that. And a bee was there and stepped on a bee. Oh man. Got to the hospital. Um, face was swollen. My foot, my foot was swollen. Whoa. Um, (laughs) I I remember it distinctively. The uh, nurse, she, uh, brought me like a sucker or something like that as, as they were like giving me an EpiPen. It was pretty cool. (laughs) <laughs> um, <laughs> and then uh yeah so that's how i found out i was allergic to bees uh-huh. and grass and pollen that's crazy. crazy what an yeah. experience for you to remember yeah. in that moment like you yeah. know just the way your mind goes <laughs> my childhood germany yeah. was the best also i'm allergic to bees yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. like that that's that's the moment. cool yeah, yeah. That was, that's the coolest part um <laughs> but i love germany i mean like everything about germany was pretty cool um there was like a grocery store Um, that we used to go to all the time and the owner, um, his daughter and son were like our babysitters, Mm -hmm. um, for myself and my two younger brothers. And so they owned the grocery store, but their children watched us all the time. And so, um, we would go down there and like the original German, um, Smurf candy, is like the best <laughs> like the haribo version now sucks but um <laughs> you're like that's not the real stuff it's okay? not the real stuff you know and all my friends who lived in germany um surprisingly which is another which is like a really cool story too how i ended back in high school with some of the people i grew up with mm-hmm. in germany oh that's awesome. just from that military life uh-huh. um yeah we talk about it all the time because we're like dude like yeah no one knows what the real smurfs are like yeah <laughs> so yeah it was pretty cool it's like your own little club yeah yeah Yeah. well and what a great like i love that so much (laughs) and just like what we observed here between the two of you of like you you know yeah you know yeah yeah. right and like yes it's about the candy right because the candy's awesome yeah 
but it's also about oh you know mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and it's like oh when you run into somebody that's like and you don't have to even have to give words to it yeah you yeah know? it's it's pretty cool it's pretty cool I wonder, Mark, like, uh, so that connection that Ryan's talking about and the connection that I felt as soon as you said Mm -hmm. that, and for everybody listening, I met Mark when he walked in the door about 15 minutes ago. So, (laughs) you know, I don't know you, but all of a sudden, even though we had different experiences within our lives, I'm Mm -hmm. sure, and lived in different places, just knowing uh, the life of being a a kid in the military with a parent Mm -hmm. in the military, Mm -hmm. you know, a dad in the military, um, felt so much like i said like warmth within my heart mm-hmm. just like mm-hmm. okay like i feel yeah. like we could get along just with yeah. knowing that <laughs> yes you know yeah. yes. being an adult who's now mm-hmm. lived in an area that's not populated mm-hmm. um by the military yeah. in the way that i know i was used to with being on post and yes. it sounds like yes. you were as well um i just wonder what type of connections you find in the classroom with kids mm-hmm. on that basis mm-hmm. um and like where that's taken you within your teaching. Yeah, definitely. I would have to agree with you with what you said. Um, just because you can always tell, like, that's always been a running joke too. Um, between my friends and I, like when we went to college, we were like, okay, we're these military brats mm-hmm. branching off, you know, going to places where we're no longer protected. Um, and just even like the, the personality traits are different. The way we communicate with, uh, you know, people are different. Um, and actually when I moved to Springfield, that was one of the things I struggled with the most um because i mean clearly you can see i'm like a big teddy bear um i do have a mean side not always there if it's not not necessary but it takes a lot to get that it, out it does i've it seen takes it a but lot. not many times yeah, it takes a lot you know and so like you know yeah so basically you know how that you know transpired in the classroom or can compare to the classroom uh, i struggled Mm-hmm. My, especially my first year, I struggled, and I was a behavior teacher. Mm-hmm. Um, I did that for five years, and you know, we grew up with you better respect mm-hmm. your parents, mm-hmm. or yes. you know, oh, you so were joining them, you know, for PT in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> as a consequence, which I've done a few times, um, you know, so that was one of the things I struggled with the most as a one as a behavior teacher, a first mm-hmm. year behavior teacher. Um, fresh out of the military <laughs> life <laughs> lifestyle and then into the classroom. Yeah, it was, it was weird. Yeah. Um, but you know, it always was a relational piece when I would get onto the students or reprimand the students, uh, as to why I was doing certain things. Mm-hmm. So that was like the good thing was I was always able to give a rationale, you know, um, while allowing them to naturally kind of be themselves within that moment as well. So, yeah. Good question. Thank you. (laughs) No, I love that. That I think that brings a lot to light, you know, you saying, you know, I'm giving that rationale. Like I'm not just reprimanding a kid just Mm because, you know, I Mm -hmm. know what's there. Mm -hmm. I know what I need to say because this is, you know, inappropriate or not Mm -hmm. going to happen Mm -hmm. in this classroom. Um, but here's why. And let me share how much I love you Mm -hmm. as the reason why I'm doing this. Yeah. It it comes from like a very understanding standpoint, you Mm -hmm. know? Um, And for me, I've always been able to relate with the students Mm -hmm. in some kind of way. Um, Because like I said, I'm a product of the military, um, the foster care system. There was a time where, you know, I I was in foster care. Um, You know, some students would always tell stories about certain aspects and things that happened to them Mm -hmm. as a child that I could obviously relate to. Um, you know, so it helped me specifically in that type of classroom to be able to produce great students in the long run. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, my first year, my first year I did experience a death. Um, but you know, the, one of the things that I can always remember with that was that student definitely was very thankful and was a changed student by the time that happened. Mm-hmm. So it's always one of the greatest things mm-hmm. that happened. You know, it was one of the saddest moments of the of my first year, but it was one of the greatest things because we could we could look back mm-hmm. on that student's progress from the first day of school to when he passed mm-hmm. and we're like, man, we made a difference. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. unfortunately, you know, that resulted in his life, um, in him losing his life. But ultimately, man, we were just like, look at the impact we had on him. Right. You know, he, you know, we took a student who was not willing to go out on a whim and introduce himself to folks, mm. um, talk, you know, um, would, you know, engage in self injurious behavior. You know, and this mm-hmm. was a 10, you know, a 10th grader, you know, yeah. where you're not really supposed to do those things, <laughs> um, you know. And so we, we worked on all that and it was just a, it was the greatest experience ever. 
Yeah. 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 So, Mark, I uh, I teach eighth grade art. Okay. Um. So, one of the things that I've been thinking about, which is actually a question that Ryan asked me, um, on my interview, <laughs> uh, is like, what is the response you get from kids when you you are sitting with them in you know things that they've gone through and being mm-hmm. like, yeah. Guess what? Like, I mean, do you share with them? Like, I was in the foster care system. Do you share those stories? And what are their responses? I do. I do. I, I'm a huge believer in restorative practices. Um, and and in order for the restorative practices to work, you have to be able to, one, meet the students where they're at. Mm-hmm. Um, two, be able to engage and understand, um, you know, and validate their feelings. And if mm-hmm. there's a connection mm-hmm. that I can make with that, man, how awesome is that, you mm-hmm. know? Um, you end up getting a little bit more respect out of the students Mm -hmm. when you do that. Um, I've never made up a story to try to connect to a student, even though I know that that's, you know, um, something you could do when when necessary. But most of the cases, I've never had to do that because, you know, sometimes in students, when they feel they're connected to you, they just kind of give you that verbal vomit, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, And I remember doing that as a child, you Mm -hmm. know, when... um, when we were returned back to the care of my dad with my dad, we were kind of lost. You know, we didn't know what to do. We were, um, we had moved to California from the Virgin Islands. We were living with, um, our grandmothers, um, myself and my two younger brothers. And when we went back to my dad, there was still like that transition phase that you have to go through, Mm -hmm. um, Mm -hmm. with, you know, the foster care system. And so, um, you know, I just remember, (laughs) I just remember using using that information in two ways. One, to gain something, and two, to get people to understand, like, who we were. Mm-hmm. Um, because I always felt like I needed to protect my little brothers in some kind of way. Mm-hmm. Like, I would go to the schools, and they would tell me people were beating them up. <laughs> and I would go fight those little kids. <laughs> <laughs> I would go fight yeah. those kids. Like, you're not about to mess with my brothers. You don't know what we've been through, you know. Mm. Um but, yeah, any chance that I could get out of something, I would tell the teacher, like, you don't know what's going on, you mm-hmm. know. No, and I was making up a story, but, you know, definitely told a story of what was going on during yeah. that time in my childhood. And right. so um, one of the things I've always been grateful for, though, is someone in every aspect of my life has always seen something different in me um, and have held me accountable to that. And so... You know, I have like several people that I have mm-hmm. to thank um, mm-hmm. over the years who who really kept me grounded. You know, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, the you talking about the restorative practices mm-hmm. um, is something that I heard about when I was still in education, mm-hmm. and uh, I've got an interesting kind of relationship and mm-hmm. uh, growth into what is it like to mm-hmm. validate somebody's feelings mm-hmm. and. Uh, you know, put it through my own framework of like, mm-hmm. is that something that's bad enough for me that I think that it's okay for it to be bad for you type mm-hmm. experience. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, seeing that and, and now looking through a different lens mm-hmm. of like just being able to validate somebody's experience just mm-hmm. because that's what they're sharing with me. Yeah. And that, uh, and how powerful that is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And yeah. then I take that lens and kind of go back and I think about story and story <laughs> mm-hmm. and story and all these mm-hmm. situations where there were experiences with students and teachers mm-hmm. and parents, like mm-hmm. just humans mm-hmm. that, I, in that moment, didn't see the rationale to validate. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And they yeah. didn't go as well. No, no. <laughs> they didn't go as well. They never do, you know, especially when you're in the position that you were in, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, I, because of where I'm at, I'm at an alternative site. Um, I don't necessarily deal with parents, but I deal with staff all the time, mm-hmm. um, which is super difficult to, to maintain, um, you know, the, the respect aspect. <laughs> because yeah. You know, in some cases, they feel like it's okay to talk to you a certain way or Mm -hmm. respond. But, you know, we really push that at Mm -hmm. my school um, on the restorative piece. And so I make sure that I model. I'm very intentional in modeling what those conversations are supposed to look like, you know. Um, But, yeah. Yeah. That's so (laughs) awesome. And I'll say that that's something that I was always intrigued about with you is the Mm -hmm. way that you talked to students and the way that you talked about students when Mm -hmm. students weren't in the room. Mm -hmm. Uh, was something that was always, it just felt like, like I placed it in this place of like high ethic, high mm-hmm. regard, mm-hmm. but it's like, it really is just like a manifestation of who you are mm-hmm. and the way that you interact with the world. Cause I, I just saw it all the time mm-hmm. and Man, thank you. <laughs> it's like, it's one of those things that I was very intrigued about you mm-hmm. 
just in the the opportunities I had to interact with you. Man, that's crazy. <laughs> I would never do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when I just when I think about like all the times that we were in situations like you know we saved a lot of students. Mm-hmm. You know, if I was able to be a part of those conversations, you know, a lot of students, you know, were able to kind of learn how to navigate through school Mm -hmm. you know Mm -hmm. um especially students with disabilities you know that's that's like super important so you as an art teacher like i get it because Mm -hmm. you get some of those students (laughs) and you have no idea what to do with them you know um and it's a struggle it's a struggle you know but you know like i said we use those restorative practices and you know i would like to think that our specials teachers love our mm-hmm. student, our little angels. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's understandable. Mm-hmm. It's understandable for sure. I can tell you, I do. I definitely, <laughs> she does. She does. I, I definitely understand that they, you know, what teachers mm-hmm. will take these, you know, these mm-hmm. kids, mm-hmm. you know, with quotations. Oh, mm-hmm. well, not that teacher. This, I'm like, mm-hmm. yeah, Brent, let's go. Come yeah. on. All yeah. of them. Let's make yeah. some yeah. stuff. Yeah. But listening to you um, speak about, you know, just how you work in the classroom mm-hmm. and, and the conversations you have mm-hmm. just helps me and even understanding mm-hmm. how to work within my classroom, whether mm-hmm. it's a student from the general population or a student that's, you know, being yeah. put pushed into my class mm-hmm. and usually, you know, in a separate special education Mm -hmm. classroom um super just very interesting and Mm -hmm. and yet again super humanizing to Mm -hmm. the student Mm -hmm. which i feel like is exactly what ryan was saying i mean and and hearing you speak about your students um they're just other humans yeah yeah it's hard to do like i mean it's a practice you Mm -hmm. know and i mean i've like i said i can you know my schooling was was awesome Mm -hmm. (laughs) my professor you know, she treated me like I was one of her children, you know, um, I at, met at Missouri her, State. At Missouri State, yeah. yeah. I met my, um, <clears throat> I have to say my favorite professor named LGK. I'll say that so that way um, <laughs> no other no other professor that I've had, you know, gets upset. But um, <laughs> <laughs> if they see this. Um, but no, seriously, I met her before I got into my majors courses and my first class as a major, uh, as a special ed major, I, it was like in Hill Hall. I don't know if you all know where that yeah, is, yeah. but Hill was like super freaking hot. <laughs> and <laughs> I was late to class. And you're like starting in August, right? Yeah, okay. we started in August. Yeah, yeah. I was late to class. Ryan knows I struggle with being late, you know? but I've worked on it though. I'm actually you on have time. Gotten I was on time today. You, you um, were early. You were early. <laughs> I was early today. Yeah, yeah. let's give you points yeah. for that. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> um, but yeah, so the class was like on the fourth floor. Um, so by this time, like I'm out of breath and I'm trying to find the class, <laughs> find the class because it's the class that has the most students in it, a big old fan blowing. I have my backpack, my jacket in my hand because I heard it was going to be cold, but it was the opposite. <laughs> um, and I walk into the class and she's like, so nice of you to show up, you know, and I instantly, without much thought, um, kind of look and I'm like, man, it's hot. And then there's hip up in here. <laughs> <laughs> and like three of my friends who were, who were in the classes, they looked at me like, what the hell is going on? You know, uh, yeah. it was super funny. And she was like, okay, now that we got that out the way, can you find your seat, sir? You know, and she, you know, and she knew me, um, like she knew of me, but that was my, like my first official class uh-huh. with her. And that was our first like real interaction outside uh, of, in hey, front of all these you people. know, this is my friend, so-and-so. He's a SPED major, too. And so it was kind of funny. So then I had to walk in front of the entire class uh, because the only seat that was available was on the first row on the far left. It was the second seat, or I think it was the third seat, and literally made so much noise just to get into oh. my seat. <laughs> what a way to enter a class. Yeah, it was crazy. It was crazy. But after that, like, she realized that I was probably a behavior student for her Mm -hmm. Um, and (laughs) she must have saw something in me because that lady literally got me through my undergraduate and my um, graduate studies That's Um, amazing. so yeah yeah so I owe a lot of that to her (laughs) on how I finished school and how I really can relate to students because she offered me that same grace um, multiple times over um, with students and so yeah Mm -hmm. yeah that's awesome. I'm, I'm interested to, to hear about 
um, like the experience of, of receiving notification that you didn't get admission into the business school. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then what, who, who did you have for support? Cause it sounds like, you know, mm -hmm. and I, I moved around not nearly mm -hmm. as much as the two of you, but I did as, mm -hmm. moved around as well. And so there's this like loss of support systems mm -hmm. when you leave places. Yeah, yeah. And so even if you had, you know, support in Wentzville, who was your mm -hmm. support when you came to Springfield? How did you handle like that experience <laughs> of making that transition in? And then what was it yeah. like? Like, was it excitement? Was it frustration? Was it? No, it was like defeat, man. Mm -hmm. um, I moved, so I moved out of my house when I was 16. Um, hadn't lived at home since. Uh, so when I came to college, it was like, okay, let's let's do this thing that I'm supposed to do. I didn't even want to go to college, to tell you the truth. Mm -hmm. um, and at the time when I didn't get accepted, um, my dad was in Iraq. Um, I believe that mm -hmm. was his second tour at the time. Um, so, and we weren't super close. So it wasn't mm -hmm. like I could call him anyway and be like, yeah, I didn't get in school. Honestly, he didn't care. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but, you know, that's how military dads are, you know, it's kind of supposed to be. They just don't really have feelings. Um, you know, and so I really didn't have anyone who uh, I could talk to, but one of my best friends lived mm -hmm. here in Springfield and he was at Missouri State. So I called him up and I was like, man, you got to come over. Mm -hmm. I'm like super mm -hmm. sad, man. Like I didn't get into the business school. Like, what am I going to do? Um, and when he came over, we like he like cooked a, cooked a meal for me. Mm -hmm. oh, awesome. um, and then we just sat and talked like the whole mm -hmm. night. Like that's like that was all we did. Um, oh. You know, um, yeah, one of my one of my best friends. Uh, shout out to KJ. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> um, but yeah, Thanks, KJ. Yeah, yeah he yeah. sounds like a great guy. Yeah, he is. He is. Um, we call ourselves the Special Six. So kind of going back to you know yeah. how I, I grew up with some people mm -hmm. in Germany and ended back up with them in high school so um there's six I have five guy best friends and we call ourselves the special six that's awesome and of the six of us three of us have the same birthday at one point in time we drove green vehicles <laughs> and all of us had like an obsession with like strawberries um <laughs> and then two of us lived in germany at the same time like my, okay. one of my best friends um his name is frankie um his mom was actually my dad's drill sergeant wow um when we were in germany so crazy right crazy yes. how life just kind of throws that at you so yeah it was pretty fun and you guys all went to waynesville high school and we all went to waynesville we all waynesville, finished up waynesville, okay. yep, we all finished yeah. up in waynesville so met met kj my sophomore year i think he was a junior um but he like fit right into our mm -hmm. friend group like mm -hmm. almost immediately and you know on military bases mm -hmm. it's like who's your neighbor yep <laughs> that's usually who you're going to be friends uh -huh. with if they're close enough in age then guess what we're hanging out yep. our parents said we need to be outside till dark comes to yeah till it go gets outside dark. okay i'll go knock on the neighbor's <laughs> so, door that one doesn't exactly. work i'll try the next one mm -hmm. yeah and at that time it was like free right like mm -hmm. we literally could go anywhere on the military base mm -hmm. as kids and not get in trouble yep. <laughs> um just because you felt so protected um mm -hmm. at that time so yeah yeah pretty cool <laughs> that's awesome that's a really cool story <laughs> yeah so um, how did that go from so you kj came over and helped mm -hmm. you through that like what was the transition then into okay well mm -hmm. i guess i'll go towards education now yeah um so I, I was getting my associate's degree and i was like i know i need to do something um i had planned on just getting a general education degree um, in business and so so that way I could teach business if I wanted to um, but then because I started working at the mm -hmm. um, care facility for adults with disabilities I was like man I should probably just kind of go in special ed you mm -hmm. know mm -hmm. um, and uh, so that's kind of how that happened I, I the next day I went in and um, actually talked to one of my friends the guy who introduced me to my professor um, and he was like, okay, let's go meet LGK. Mm -hmm. Um, and if you're still interested after you meet her, you know, then, then let's go ahead and do it. And I was like, all right, you know, mm -hmm. it's kind of, you know, scared of this lady. She heard she was like a big deal. Um, <laughs> and so we met her, I met her, um, went to, um, the bursar's office that next day and mm -hmm. then, um, talked to my counselor and I was like, Hey, I think I'm going to just get out of the business program and I'm going to start here, but I would go i'm going to go with college of education and go for special ed so my counselor um at the time she was trying to 
pull my transcripts and make sure I had everything. But it was a smooth, smooth transition into education. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. That next day I was like, man, I just can't, I can't fail. Mm -hmm. Like I knew I needed a degree and for whatever reason, I felt like college was what I needed. I didn't, but I didn't, you know, we have so many kids that feel like they're forced to go to college and, um, you know, I don't regret it, but it was one of those things like, man, I wish I had someone who could really say like, man, you have options, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so that's how that, <laughs> that's how that happened. <laughs> so I'm interested, like think of, I want to ask this question more mm-hmm. so in the framework of like, what is your relationship right now with education and how did you get there? A career, um, a job, a joy? Uh, you what? know, <laughs> right now I have a love hate relationship mm-hmm. with education. Okay. Um, you know, I knew I didn't want to be in the classroom anymore and I knew I wanted to move up in a way. Um, but I just, just still don't really know if what I'm doing now is what I ultimately want to do. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I enjoy it to a T. Um, but there are definitely some struggles, you know, with um, my current position, you know, um, I can, do, we, can, can we jump in real quick and give, like, I know I have a little bit of context about your current position, yeah. but are you willing to give a little sure. bit more about yeah, it? Yeah, sure, awesome. sure. So it's a residential facility, um, is where, um, the alternative school is at. So it's an extension of the school district, um, that I work for. Um, and so we provide the educational services for the students that live on that campus. Um, we have a process for students if they, um, do well in the classrooms and in in the home setting across the board that then they're allowed to attend the neighborhood elementary middle and high school so it's a k-12 school um has about 73 students right now when we're full we're at about 76 oh wow um and so these are all students that are considered like the most at-risk youth um for the district um but they're probably like the most well-behaved students. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, we've had a couple go um, to the neighborhood high school and they came back and they were like, man, the way these kids talk to the teachers, it's <laughs> ridiculous. I would never, you know, so it's been, it's re- very telling of the work that we do there, mm-hmm. which is pretty cool. Um, but yeah. How many years have you been in that position? Um, this is my second. Mm-hmm. Um, and with the position, so my role is technically the leader of the of the school. But the district doesn't recognize it in that way. So um, I'm on a teacher salary with a stipend. Um, but I do all of the managerial things that a principal would mm-hmm. typically do. Right. I was going to say, so you're like the principal. <laughs> yeah. And the so kids maybe recognize you as that. They call me the principal. Right. Uh-huh, they do all that. Um, when, I'm, when we're talking to other districts or someone calls, you know, they're like, who do we talk to? You know, and... and you know, I, I always tell my secretary, make sure to say it correctly. I'm just a program coordinator, but they're like, no, you're our leader mm-hmm. and you're, we're going to recognize you mm-hmm. as that. Um, you know, so there's, there's some things I struggle with that. I'm not going to lie, you know, and, yes. and we had the conversation um, yes. before you left, um, you know, of what that was going to look like for me. But I felt like if I wanted to grow and, and expand my career, opportunities then it was something that I needed to do Mm -hmm. um and and two years later based on the amount of work that I do (laughs) um it doesn't equate to the pay um Mm -hmm. but I love the job and I love those kids Mm -hmm. and I relate to those kids and so ultimately that's where I have my why you know um is is that is that you know the pay piece it'll come eventually um maybe not here in Mm -hmm. this district maybe another district or another state (laughs) um but you know um i I love those aspects of it yeah but but the the managerial pieces i struggle with a lot because there's just really no support um on that end what i'm hearing from you is just something that i i feel like you know a lot of teachers will talk about but this is hearing from it from your perspective um in the school that you work with uh, is just another aspect of like, what a struggle. I love my job. I love my kids, the people I work with, but it's really hard to be the human that I want to be and like make an actual living in order to even provide for my needs, not mm-hmm. to mention anything outside of that. Oh yeah, definitely. Definitely. Ryan, Ryan knows, he knows that I'm, I work 
I'm like a slave, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I've, I've always had two plus mm-hmm. jobs. Um, and this is the first year that I haven't, but basketball season is starting up. And so, um, that's where I have. Ticket yep, taken? Yep. What are you score doing? Keeping, score keeping. Score, score keeping. my favorite. Being mm-hmm. front row and center. I can't coach anymore, so why not? You know, why not be a part of the game? <laughs> so can you not coach because of your position? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which and that's is another been, thing with yeah. like, mm-hmm. okay, mm-hmm. why don't we name you as the mm-hmm. principal mm-hmm. and pay you as such yeah. if we're yeah. going to take away mm-hmm. the extra, you know, yeah. like coaching abilities. And yeah. Things. Yeah. Those things are supposed to be worked on, you know? Um, so I've been told, um, but you know, <laughs> neither here or there. Um, hopefully it will happen mm-hmm. at some point and I don't know when that will be, but you know, I try not to make that the focus of my work, mm-hmm. but I do challenge it in ways that, um, help me understand, you know, like when I'm supposed to be there, you know, like I don't show up right at seven thirty like no one else. Um, I make sure I'm there by eight. And so, you know, so I work eight to five, you know, like a typical administrator mm-hmm. would, um, you know, and sometimes my staff, they struggle with that a little bit cause they prefer me to be there at seven forty when they're there, but mm-hmm. you know, they handle it. They do well without me being there. Um, and they know where they know where I'm at all the time, and they know my heart, and they also know um, this aspect of it, and so um, they don't know as depth, um, as deep into it um, as we're talking, but they do know that there are some, mm-hmm. you know, some struggles with that, and there's things that I struggle with internally um, behind that, you know. Right. And so, yeah, yeah, just like I said, like you know, I'm, how am I supposed to manage these teachers? Mm-hmm. And I've never been trained on how to do a classroom walkthrough. Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> yeah, I think I think that like, like I want to absolutely validate where you're at as far as like the time that it takes because mm-hmm. I know the time mm-hmm. that it takes, and the pay, and all of those pieces. But I think too, like even more so than that, like or in addition to that. It's like all of these pinch points, Mm -hmm. all of these, these spots where it's like, there are, I, you know, and I don't, for those of you that are listening, you might be in a small district or a large district, but you know, the district that Mm -hmm. we, that you work in that I, that I worked in at 3000 employees. And so Mm -hmm. it's super easy to get lost Mm -hmm. in those types Mm -hmm. of systems. And I know that there's, you know, school districts that have 25,000 employees and those types of things, but you know, there are expectations that principals are at certain Mm -hmm. things. Mm-hmm. and principals get invitations to those things. Mm-hmm. And then there's also expectations that principals follow through on those things. Yeah. Yeah. And it sounds like from the conversations that we've had, that there's a number of pinch points where there's these pieces where you get left out. I, mean, I get left out. all Not the time. on the expectation, mm-hmm. not on the expectation, <laughs> definitely not on the expectation. Um, but yeah, like for the longest time, my email, I never got an email. Mm. Um, you know, so half the time I would get these emails from different personnel, yeah. um, over at the big office, you know, mm-hmm. and cause there's uh, a listserv that's called middle school principals mm-hmm. yep, yep. and you weren't included on it. wasn't one. included on that one or elementary or high school. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and it, and it took a while. It actually took me speaking to other principals mm-hmm. and them advocating for me to say, Hey, why is this guy not, mm-hmm. you know, a part of these conversations? He's a building leader, Mm. you know, um, and the person who was in the position before me went through the same thing, but, you know, without speaking on what his path was, because I don't know ultimately what it was, that wasn't a long-term position for him, Mm -hmm. you know? So it was kind of like, I'll shut up, I'll do it, you know, whatever. And for me, I'm not a perfectionist, but I like to know that I'm doing my job, you know? but I don't know what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. You know, if I'm being honest, I don't know what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I do, I know that I'm supposed to make sure the kids aren't (laughs) going crazy every day. Mm -hmm. I'm not calling the office to get support. Um, you know, I'm supposed to support my teachers, but I I truly don't know if I'm doing the right thing, Mm -hmm. you know? Um, yeah. So those are my struggles. That's why it's a love hate relationship right now because I want to do these things. I want to be better. I want to be the leader, um, that gets recognized at, you know, certain events Mm -hmm. for student achievement and student growth and stuff, but it's not going to happen at that school because no one who can make those decisions even recognizes that, you know? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Big frustration, big frustration. I am. Um, I really appreciate you sharing that. And 
something that comes to mind as you're continuing to share Mm -hmm. like your struggle with that Mm -hmm. i mean number one like i can just feel your Mm -hmm. energy of just like well at least i've got Mm -hmm. At least I got my kids and Mm -hmm. I'm supporting my staff. Mm -hmm. You know, I can tell that that like, I don't know what I'm doing, but, but I know I can do this. Mm -hmm. Um, which just fills my heart a ton because you know, that's as a teacher, it's like, Mm -hmm. man, that's all we want. You know, like that is so important. Have us on your mind Mm -hmm. because ultimately we've all got the kids on our mind. Um, I wonder if you've ever thought about like the difference between your school and any other school within your district, oh, yeah, definitely. you know, just by way of like some people, you know, would say like by way of you not knowing what to mm-hmm. do, but mm-hmm. also then would you say that you handle it in a more human way than any other admin would? Definitely. And <laughs> Ryan could probably attest to that <laughs> based on some of the conversations we used to have. So we want, mm-hmm. we go way back by the way. Mm-hmm. Um, like he was a math teacher and it was my first year as a, a behavior teacher. And I walked up to him and I'm like, Hey, I heard that I heard you're getting some of my students and these mm-hmm. are behavior kids. So I just want to tell you about them, <laughs> um, because it was like two of the students were like at grade level. And so they deserve to be yeah. in yeah. his class. But I'm like, you may hear some cuss words, you may hear this, you know? And so that's kind of how we connected. Mm-hmm. Um, and then just like every meeting after that, like <laughs> we always found a way oh, to yeah. like connect um yeah. so then when uh, i found out that he had moved over to the school where he was a principal at um and the person that i um whose position i ended up taking moved up into the position that i have now i ended up inheriting his schools oh, okay. and so that's how we ended back up yes. but we used to always see each other when he was at the middle school at like different trainings and stuff like that but we always had a way to connect um but yeah, that's that's pretty much how those conversations would go because it would we I would be like, hey, I know you're the principal, but no, this kid, <laughs> this student's disability is a manifestation. Uh-huh. He's coming back. I know it's gonna upset a lot of your teachers. Mm-hmm. Let's problem solve. Yes, you know, let's meet as a grade team. Um, which was one of the things I always appreciated about that school was because they had teams. You know, mm-hmm. it was like, well, if you have a team everyone can respond in the same way. Uh Everyone can intervene for this student in the same way. Why are we having five different conversations about the same student? Seriously. When you see the same student every single day, Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yep. you know? And so, Mm. you know, I would approach it like that, you know, and sometimes, you know, Ryan would give me the look like, but this kid is doing this, he's (laughs) doing that. And I'm like, I know, man, I know, but I guarantee you if we, take this to a form B or manifestation or the parent says you, you know, you, you, my son has a disability. You Uh can't do anything. I'm like, dude, I'm going to say respectfully, I'm not the building principal. (laughs) (laughs) All true. All true. Mark Simmons is a very honest man. (laughs) He'll shoot you straight no matter what. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it was just like I, I'm okay to go with this however you want to. Yes, but I'm once I do my side mm-hmm. and I get the paperwork done. You know, you may temporarily not see the student for a mm-hmm. day or two because of how busy I am. But <laughs> homeboy's coming back. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that, it's those conversations I had mm-hmm. to have a lot. Mm-hmm. I bet. <clears throat> yeah. I, yeah, I uh there's this one story that's just sticking out to me that I feel like, you know, what I what I had the opportunity to experience. I mean, one there's just this like this um just uh, just awe that I have about you um in the way you tell your story and the way that you experienced that kiddo at, at the bowling alley when you were <laughs> in high school. Mm-hmm. And then the way that you were in employment working with individuals who needed a little help and that drove you into that path of special education and i mm-hmm. saw you working with the students in your classroom at, at parkview when mm-hmm. we were there and i saw the way that you worked with them but i was still terrified of it even at that point <laughs> yeah. and like i found ways to navigate working with the students that came from your mm-hmm. classroom mm-hmm. Um, because it you know i saw like what the what the discipline process mm-hmm. looked like and it was mm-hmm. like this is this isn't going to change this kid mm-hmm. or maybe a relationship. Well, I might try mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. And sometimes it didn't, sometimes it didn't. But what, what I'm so 
like just really enamored with is your like attraction. That's yeah. how I feel about it. Is like your attraction to working with students with special needs yeah. and disabilities because I was terrified of it. Mm -hmm. And I, it wasn't until I had an interview for my middle school principal assistant principal <laughs> job. Mm -hmm. And that interview was like two hours long. And uh, in that interview, it was like this scared straight experience <laughs> of like, we have, you know, we've got CSS, we have EBS, we mm -hmm. have deaf ed, mm -hmm. we have behavior challenges mm -hmm. at this school. Mm -hmm. And are you going to be able to handle that basically? And like mm -hmm. went through like war stories of like, <laughs> yeah. this is what we were dealing with this week and this mm -hmm. week. And, and, and it was just this moment of like, and I can remember he even asked me the question, will you work with our, with, with our students? And mm -hmm. I was like, well, I work at the, the high school that, that this middle school feeds to. So your students are my students. So I don't know what you're talking about, but yeah, yeah of course I would. Cause yeah. I've been doing it for five years. Yeah. But there was this experience of like, I walked out of that going, I don't think I have the chops. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I can do it. This special yeah. ed part that he's mm -hmm. talking about, I don't know. Mm -hmm. And if I could go back, mm -hmm. like if I ever go back to education, it's in special ed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh man. And so like your, like that is so valley, like valiant to me. Like just, mm -hmm. I just see like just the truest part of you in your attraction mm -hmm. to work with students with disabilities. Oh, thank and you. I feel it now a decade mm -hmm. later. <laughs> yeah. And so I don't remember why I was going there, but to me it was just this, like when we would talk about students, we had that same felt sense. Mm -hmm. And when we generalize that conversation mm -hmm. out to everybody that you have to have the conversation with, mm -hmm. right? Because mm -hmm. you have a handful of schools that you send kiddos to. Mm -hmm. And what's, you know, in your current position, you're working, like the goal for those kids is to meet the expectations so they can mm -hmm. achieve the opportunity mm -hmm. to go into their neighborhood to school. To go to neighborhood school, yeah. yeah. What are some of those conversations like? Um, with the students or with, you know, like the staff? <laughs> Whatever you feel comfortable sharing. About. Um, well, um, in the most recent conversation, um, the middle school um, principal was not interested in accepting mm. any of our students, which is which was um, disheartening mm. um, for the simple fact that that school is essentially <laughs> a struggling school mm -hmm. with the same population of students. So I was like, it's really no different. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're not getting any difference of students. So why can't we just add a couple more? <laughs> um, you know, I was like, you know, you're getting them anyway, but you know, I, for, for the sake of having mm. a conversation and being, you know, uh, collaborative, let's, yeah. let's have this conversation. The other two schools, very welcoming, opening, mm -hmm. you know, love our elementary students. Um, I take them to school every day that I'm at work. Like in the um, car line? Yes. No way. I do. Oh. I do. Um, <laughs> I do. Oh. Um, and it's right now we have two that go. Um, both of them are fourth graders. And I they cannot like, imagine what it means to those kids to be car line kids. <laughs> oh, gosh. They love it. Dude. I bet. <laughs> they oh. love it. especially And especially if I'm late. And they always know that I'm having a conversation with someone. So they're like waiting at the door like. Oh. <laughs> Principal Simmons, it's time to go. Um, you know, and I'm like, all right, come on, hurry up, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and they're always looking at the time. So I always have to, like, leave my watch on for them so mm -hmm. they can see in the back seat. Gosh, that's such um, an experience for them, I'm yeah. sure. Just yes. that'll stick with them yeah. forever. Well, it started out like, okay, between myself and the teacher, we were going to make it work for the first week of school. Um, but we have we had 11 students overall earn the, the privilege of going to their neighborhood school. So it became this, like huge transportation issue yeah like yes. mm -hmm. we know they can't get buses because of the most recent transportation change um sorry my knees are like bad so I'm <laughs> for it. Yeah. um and so um we knew that that was going to be an issue and then like there's just not enough staff like everywhere is short staff everywhere mm -hmm. um like we're short like we're short five paraprofessionals um again you know these are behavioral mm -hmm. students right <laughs> and we're short staff <laughs> Um, so yes, yeah, so I was like, why not? That's a no brainer. I mean, I still have the insurance. I still have, um, it, it's literally around the corner. Yeah. Like it's not far. A two minute drive okay. and we're walking on days that the weather is good. Uh -huh. Um, and so, you know, why not? If I'm here, why not? Let me take them to yeah. school. So they look forward to that every day. Oh my gosh. Um, yes. <laughs> so I told them today, actually, that I won't be able to take them tomorrow when they were coming back from school. And they were like, so who's going to take it? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> and one of them, he's like the cutest thing, man. He has these really thick glasses. So, you know, you like see into the future when he looks like <laughs> you. Um, but <laughs> legit, one of my, one of, the cutest, one of the cutest students ever, man. He just looks at you with these like big old eyes and just wants mm. wants to make sure he you're ple- he's pleasing you. Oh. Um, so cute, so cute. But yeah, he's like, who's going to take us then? <laughs> yeah, he's <laughs> like, come on. that look like. Second best, I guess. Come on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So it was pretty funny. Um, but yeah, so we have that. We have two there. Um, we have two um, students that are going full time at the middle school. Um, and they start at 9.30. So it's like we have mm. three different tier times. Yes. So we have 8.30, 9.30. Oh, we have a 7.30, sorry, 7.30, 8.30, 9.30. Wow. And then our half-day students go at 10.30 oh, and 12.30. So it's a lot of movement that we have to navigate right. through every single day. <laughs> and transportation. And transportation oh. won't support it because they, we live really close. Or right. the students live really close, and so we have to provide that transportation. Wow. Um, so, yeah. It's it's kind of crazy. Poor transportation this year. I know. I I've know. Been, I'm like I, I I don't know what gift. So mm-hmm. I, I I really liked sitting by the director of transportation mm-hmm. when I was there. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I'm feeling for him, man. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, he's been driving buses. I'm sure he has. Um, yeah. They're so short staffed, yeah. and the schedule change. And yeah, I, I'm gonna send him a gift. I yeah. really am because he, you it's know like, he'll probably appreciate that. I'm too, sure so. he would. I, I can't yeah. even imagine. Yeah. Oh gosh, it's him. a headache. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. We've we've texted him a few times myself. Um, last summer, I had the opportunity of being the um, the summer director for special services, um, which is essentially like running the district for special ed over mm-hmm. for summer programming. Um, and got to build a relationship with with the director of transportation. Yeah, he's and so, a great guy. You know, we myself and my um, assistant were always like, "Hey, we're thinking of you." Hope, mm-hmm. you oh, know, man, no kidding. We know you're struggling, but. <laughs> This summer, we promise we'll be yeah. on top of it. Yeah, <laughs> probably won't be, but yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. So it's pretty cool. Yeah. So there's one question here at the end that I think is, is like, I'm just really interested to hear your thoughts on it. Okay. So, so what is it like to work in a system that's perpetually labeled as broken? Who or what is the problem, and who or what do you believe is the solution? Oh. That's a question. That's a loaded question. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't really pinpoint one simple thing because if I have to relay back to you know some some teachers would say, well, it's the parents, it's the home life. It starts in the home. Mm-hmm. While I agree, that wasn't the case for me. My mm-hmm. home life sucked. Mm-hmm. So being in school those six hours a day was like the best time of my life. Mm-hmm. You know, um, some of the look. I'm about to get cried thinking about it. Yeah. Um, you know, some of the most influential relationships, teachers, you know, they fed us, they cared about us, they cared for my well-being. I had teachers, you know, buying me things, mm-hmm. um, you know, and so really just trying to get educators like it's it's the hardest job, but it's also the most rewarding job mm-hmm. ever. And, you know, one of the things that I think has kind of been lost um, with the high demands of education is the relationship piece Mm -hmm. like you you have to build a relationship you know um and and we focus so much on the negative that we really forget that we can also be positive Mm -hmm. um you know um one of my friends in college did a study on positive praise statements (laughs) so he Mm -hmm. he did a task analysis not a task analysis sorry he did a frequency count of the number of times a teacher reprimanded a student. Mm. Um, and in one of the, I think he observed in like three classrooms, in one of the classrooms, the teacher got on to the same student like 36 times in an hour. Mm. Oh. Not oh. one positive statement to that student. Think about the impact of that <laughs> for that student, right? Um, so, I, so, I mean, again, it's like a loaded question, but I can't, really pinpoint one thing you know i I know that part of the conversation as a leader you know i try to lead with with this with the aspect of you chose this profession you know and even though we aren't these students parents we have a duty one Mm -hmm. to keep them safe we also have a responsibility to help them learn and help them grow whether that whether we're focusing on an academic piece or we're looking at those social skill deficits because Mm -hmm. 
we don't have any control outside of these six hours. Mm -hmm. Yes. So what can we do (laughs) within these six hours? Like how powerful do we need to be within these six hours? If that means that, you know, I'm spending a period and a half, we're playing life. Mm -hmm. Guess what is happening during that time? Mm -hmm. They're getting skills that they're not getting at home. Right. They're learning money management. They're learning what it's like to have kids, (laughs) you Mm -hmm. know, hypothetically. (laughs) Um, (laughs) You know, and we're teaching those real life transition <coughs> skills, you know, and those are things that they don't, they aren't getting, you know. And so my, my goal and my focus, um, especially when I'm talking to my staff is just really saying like, you know, let's, let's get out all of the frustrations and struggles you have. And what's the ultimate focus here? Mm-hmm. It's the students. It's their growth. It's their achievement. Mm-hmm. So where do we need to meet these students individually so we can get them to, to those points? Um, so I don't know. I don't know if that's really the the solution mm-hmm. to the problem. Um, it's what I do with mm-hmm. my staff. Um, and a lot of the conversations we have, I really challenge them to think about their classroom management because ultimately when I'm involved in the conversation, they've already lost their authority mm-hmm. with the student, you know, and then they're frustrated with me as a leader because I'm like, you're going back to class. I don't know, really know. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. what do you want me to say? You know, I'm not sending a student home. So yeah. I guess you're going back to class. So as a teacher, you know, what is it that you're doing to really help facilitate not only the conversation with the student, but your expectations of your classroom, mm-hmm. you know, and what needs to change. And that's hard. Change is hard for people. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that's another solution is just really being open to change. You mm-hmm. know, right now we're, going through a big shift Mm -hmm. with a new um, superintendent. And it's, you know, it's hard. A lot of people don't like that, but I appreciate that. You know, Mm -hmm. the, our superintendent that we have right now is super personable, um, very real, um, (laughs) funny, you -hmm. know, Um, and it, and it's very telling of a cultural aspect that is often missed. Mm Mm-hmm especially in this district. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to go too deep into that, but (laughs) um, it is, you know, and people don't know how to relate with that. You know, Mm -hmm. luckily I've had the issue. Luckily I've had the, you know, ability to like really work with Ryan. Ryan has gotten to see who I am authentically, you know, and so our differences, even our educational differences, you don't see, and it's not an issue because, you know, of, our cultural backgrounds mm-hmm. or even our skin color. Like mm-hmm. one of my closest mentors, you know, look up to you a lot, man. But, you know, but that's, that's, a, that's another thing, you yeah. know, that's super hard. You know, when you look at our data over the last couple of years, we've been significantly disproportionate for students with IEPs mm-hmm. and students of color. Mm-hmm. And that's because they're the hardest students to relate with mm-hmm. and people refuse to do that. And so that's been my challenge is mm-hmm. like, Let's really look at that, you know? So, yeah. 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 R- relationships is such a, has been an evolution uh, in my own understanding of w- w- why relationship, why mm-hmm. connection. Mm-hmm. And, you know, in every book, you you know, yes, relationships are key to mm-hmm. student achievement mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. education, mm-hmm. right? Like yada, yada, yada. <laughs> okay. Old, old hat. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't matter who you sit down and talk to in education. Yes. Mm-hmm. They're, they're happy to like consent to mm-hmm. that statement. To me, in my experience, it was this idea of like a means to an end. Mm -hmm. The relationship is how I will get to student Mm -hmm. achievement. Yes. But what I've come into realize is that maybe relationship can just be there for the sake of connection with the kid. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe relationship can just be there for the sake of connection with that adult. Yep. Mm -hmm. Maybe it doesn't have to be that avenue. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. to get to something else. Yeah, yeah. Maybe we can connect with each other on a human level. Mm-hmm. And then after that, yeah, maybe let's invite into a space mm-hmm. where we mm-hmm. could talk about something that isn't directly connected to the, to the connection. 100% agree. Right. But why can't we agree. just like take the, what we're trying to get to away for a mm-hmm. second and just say, I just want to know you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, no, I agree with that. And it's hard to do as a leader. I have a notebook. Like, <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I had to write stuff down. Like, okay, yes. this teacher has three kids, their names, so, 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 mm-hmm. so. You know, um, actually, one of my, um, a close 
um, person to me, you know, gave me that idea because that's what he did mm-hmm. um, with his staff. And I was like, man, that's an awesome mm-hmm. idea. Um, I'm going to take that, you know. So yeah. I'm very intentional of making connections, yes. at least two a day. Mm-hmm. Um, I have one staff who's always in my office, so he looks like a favorite. Um, but he's really not. Like, we truly do have, like, legit conversations. Uh-huh. Um, there are some there are some loose conversations, but really – it's, it's usually problem solving, mm-hmm. whether it's personal for him mm-hmm. um, and what he's experiencing with his children who are at um, the school that you used to be a principal at. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and there's been some struggles there, um, mm-hmm. you know, and so I've really tried to, like, help him navigate through some of those things. Um, but, yeah, it's, 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 I agree with that. Yeah. I, agree yeah. with that. I know for me in talking about, um, you know, the context of students from different cultural backgrounds Mm -hmm. and the idea of all this disproportionality and, Mm -hmm. and the struggle with race in education Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. the, like when we start talking about like authentic connection, Mm -hmm. my experience is that that requires a willingness, one, like a desire to know you, man. (laughs) And that's scary. (laughs) It's scary. It's scary when I don't know, like when, when the kid moves in from the Virgin Islands, how do I relate to him? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He doesn't look like me. He doesn't talk like me. Mm-hmm. He doesn't come from a family experience like me. Mm-hmm. It's vulnerable mm-hmm. it to is. get down on that level. Mm-hmm. What's that like? You know, like in mm-hmm. that, that to me is where the, is so much of, of the rub mm-hmm. of like, mm-hmm. it's scary and vulnerable to go to these spaces with people who aren't like us. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. But, it is mm-hmm. like innately human mm-hmm. to do that. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. But but you hit the nail on the head when you said you like it. It makes you vulnerable, but you have to put the effort there. You mm-hmm. have to try. You yes. know, like I went to schools where there weren't people who looked like me as yes. my teachers. Mm-hmm. You know what I yes. mean? Like, and yet I enjoyed every mm-hmm. educational experience I had even through college, Mm -hmm. you know, um, because those teachers understood the assignment, you know, that's like a new (laughs) term um, nowadays. (laughs) Uh, My students would love that, Um, you know, (laughs) but, you know, they really understood the aspect of, you know, and I think that that goes back to like our military background Mm -hmm. of just, there's a uniqueness of growing up in the military um, because even if you feel a certain way, Mm -hmm. whether that's, you know, like religiously, you know, where your politics are, you know, or, or how you feel in general about cultural backgrounds, it doesn't matter in the military right. because mm-hmm. we all have to work. Mm-hmm. Everyone has a same goal. Mm-hmm. You know, I didn't experience any, any racism until I moved to Springfield, mm-hmm. you know, and that's literally from childhood up until adulthood. My first experience with racism was when I moved to Springfield, Missouri. Mm. You know, yeah. <laughs> that's what I was thinking when you said, like, in the military. Like, <clears throat> I mean, no matter where I lived, mm-hmm. my experience was one of like I didn't know mm-hmm. race mm-hmm. or background or like you move to a place and you absorb it, mm-hmm. and you're living the life of you know your parent almost, mm-hmm. and everybody's just living that life. Yeah, and yeah. so. Yeah, I felt that same thing. And the way you're talking about it (laughs) is so real in my body of I moved to Springfield. Mm -hmm. And I was like, who do these kids think they are? Yes, it was rough. And and I looked like them. So I can't imagine Mm -hmm. the Mm -hmm. way that you felt. And I'm trying Mm -hmm. right now to just embody and wonder because I hated it. Mm -hmm. And I could blend in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I just, I want to honor you so much in that <laughs> because I can't imagine because mm-hmm. there were places that I lived that I did not blend in by the mm-hmm. color of my skin mm-hmm. or, you know, where I came from. Mm-hmm. And I had no idea that I didn't. Right, right. Because we all had, like you said, that mm-hmm. commonality that mm-hmm. nothing mattered and I didn't feel it at one point, you right. know? And then I came here and yeah, gosh, I just want to like, and it's like the topic of conversations, right? It always boils down to, when, especially when we're talking about education, mm-hmm. race. Yeah. Or it's always us versus the black kids or the black kids are supposed to be or, you know, Hispanic kids. And it's like, but what are you doing as an educator? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, we can you can complain all you want, right? But these kids are, they are required to receive a free and appropriate education. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So for the next 
13 years, they're ours. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So how are you fostering that mm-hmm. conversation, you know? And if truly, if you struggle with that, you got to go, mm-hmm. you know? like. Right. And I just want to layer, like, <laughs> yes, there's a federal mandate mm-hmm. for a free and appropriate education. Mm-hmm. They're also humans. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. And yes. they deserve the same dignity mm-hmm. that you, mm-hmm. educator, you, person, deserve mm-hmm. too. Yeah. And like, that matters. Mm-hmm. The humanity of that student, the humanity of that teacher, it all mm-hmm. matters. Yes. Right? Yes. And being a different human does not mean you're more or less mm-hmm. than you, you know, mm-hmm. the other human. Yeah. It, yeah. Okay, they come from a different place. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Let's instead of running away because that's scary, mm-hmm. invite mm-hmm. and say like, you know, even even as I'm sitting here right now, and I'm like, Mark, I had like to like try and sit here and feel what I felt, but mm-hmm. then feel it that much more over in the words mm-hmm. that you're saying. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, you know what? I'm never gonna experience that, mm-hmm. but I can sit with it mm-hmm. and try my best to at least say, man. Thank you so much for sharing that yeah. because I just learned so much about my own experiences mm-hmm. through your experiences. Mm-hmm. And I'd mm-hmm. love to question you more on that. Mm-hmm. And what if educators and humans mm-hmm. took that stance and said, I don't know. I can't know in the way that you mm-hmm. do, mm-hmm. but I'd love to just talk to you about yeah. it. Yeah. Man, one of the, we talked about historical things of, you know, um, I can't remember what quite what you said. Um, oh, relationship. When you were talking about relationships, like it's a historical thing, right? Uh, an historical intervention <laughs> that people neglect to use is the 210 rule. Mm-hmm. Two minutes every day, you know, for 10 days straight, connect with the student, mm-hmm. especially the student that you're struggling with. Guarantee you by day 10, you have a totally different aspect and relationship mm-hmm. with that student. And that and, and as an educator, even as a classroom teacher, not necessarily for me, but I get it when I go and have these conversations with teachers, that's hard. Mm-hmm. Because again, it makes you vulnerable. It means mm-hmm. I'm giving up my authority. And it means that to me in my mind as an educator, I'm giving this student authority over me as an educator and that's truly not what it is mm-hmm. it's it's like you said recognizing that you're a human mm-hmm. i'm a human you know i can't relate to the butt whoop the butt whooping you got the night before mm-hmm. but what i do know is how can i make this morning better for you yeah you know if that means that you're sitting out for a couple minutes or you want to just write a journal or something i'm still going to give you credit for it why can't why can't i mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, like what what is the struggle (laughs) with you doing that? You know, but again, it goes Mm -hmm. back to I have to give up the authority um, and and, and not being resistant and hesitant Mm -hmm. to change, you know. And and so, yeah, so that's 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 my goal. Um, I don't know if that's going to happen before my time Mm -hmm. in education (laughs) is over. Um, But the more I have these conversations, that's how real and transparent I want to be. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Well, and really like that is such a huge reason like what we're talking about right now is such Mm -hmm. a huge reason as to why i wanted to start this podcast in general Mm -hmm. is i want you the listener to know that you matter Mm -hmm. not because of Mm -hmm. the job you do not because of the good teacher that you are or the Mm -hmm. bad teacher that you are because of the good or bad parent that you are or because how hard you work or how many sick days you have in your (laughs) bank or whatever like the grades you have (laughs) yes yeah yeah no, you matter. Mm-hmm. Just like you matter, Mark. Mm-hmm. And just like you matter, Olivia. Yes. <laughs> like, and you too, Ryan. You too, man. Thanks. <laughs> and my hope is that through conversations like this, we can invite other people mm-hmm. inside and outside the system. Yes. To start seeing. Mm-hmm. Right? Because that student that got the butt whooping the night before, mm-hmm. there is no strategy that I can teach that student at 8 a.m. the next morning that's going to no. make that better for that kid. No. no. It's not. No. But me sitting there and saying, I have no idea what you're mm-hmm. experiencing, but I'm here and I'm mm-hmm. going to sit in this discomfort mm-hmm. with you. Mm-hmm. Man, super powerful, man. That kid will remember that moment for forever. I'm telling you, the most fond memories I have in of school were all related to teachers doing just that. Yes. 
you know, my, my, my English teacher, one of my favorite English teachers, literally used to go to her classroom every day and get a Pop-Tart because she knew I worked. And she knew I wasn't living at home. <laughs> so she wanted to make sure I ate every day. Oh, and so beautiful. she would be like, you know where they're at. You know, like, come in. You're not disrupting mm-hmm. my class. Get mm-hmm. the Pop-Tart. Go to class. Mm-hmm. We're going to have a conversation when I see you later. You know, favorite math teacher. She knew most of us were not living at home. Mm-hmm. You know, we're kind of going through the weird teenage phase of thinking we were adults ahead of time. So, you know, we spent three days <coughs> On the same math lesson. And mm-hmm. she was okay with that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we would be like, man. Blasphemy. <laughs> yeah. Blasphemy from this math teacher. <laughs> <laughs> you know? But she would be like, you know, I know you all didn't do the assignment. And we would be like, yeah, you know, Miss P, we didn't. You know, mm-hmm. I tried some of them, you know, but math was always a struggle mm-hmm. for me. So, you know, I knew, I knew, you know, if I did a couple, then I got some points. <laughs> <laughs> but I knew there was like three people who didn't do anything. So at least I wasn't mm-hmm. the worst. <laughs> But yeah, you know, it's it's it goes back to that, just being open to what it is that student is truly experiencing. Yes. So, I mean, it, it speaks volumes to what you all are doing here and why I'm like, hey, count me in. Mm-hmm. You That's know, awesome. I'm, I'm, I'm all for that um, because it's 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 a skill that's missing today, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. with all the demands in education that I feel shouldn't go, mm-hmm. you know, shouldn't be gone. So, mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> well, man, Mark, I feel like I I feel like I know you way better, and I still feel like we're just barely scratching oh, yeah, the surface. Man. Yeah, man, we didn't even talk about anything. <laughs> I know. Like I, uh, it's it's a funny feeling I'm having right now. I'm, I'm I'm in this place of like, man, we're coming up to the end, and I have this sorrow of like, there's so much I wanted to know about Mark, yeah. and there's so much that you shared with us. Mm-hmm. Thank you for that. Yes, no thank problem, you so no much. No problem. No problem. I'm but glad. there is so much <laughs> inside of you that makes you who you are, yeah. and it's like this. Like this is the feeling I'm talking about every time I leave you. Of just mm. like, man, I want to know that guy more. <laughs> yeah. And this was like, oh, I'm gonna know him, yeah. and now I'm still being left with the same big yeah. feeling. <laughs> yeah, I'm sitting here wishing that. I mean, I'm excited that people are listening to this, Mm -hmm. but I just wish that all the people listening could be near you Mm -hmm. because of just like the vibe that you throw off. Mm -hmm. It's just like, you know, like it's just comfortable, Mm -hmm. you know, because I'm coming into this interview and I was like, oh gosh, like it's been just Ryan and Bridger and I, and like, that's been really comfortable because I know them really Mm -hmm. well. I don't know this guy, Mm -hmm. you know, um, and gosh, I'm just so comfortable talking to you that, yeah, Ryan, I'm like, Mark, nice to meet you. I feel like I know you. Also, I have a lot of questions. Can we just like... <laughs> I was like, you got questions? Okay. Um, <laughs> what are we doing? Do, yeah. I need, do I need an alcoholic beverage? <laughs> yeah. But this tea is awesome, by the way. Good. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Well, thank you so much, Mark. This yes, has been you. like so good oh, so thank so you. good thank you for having me seriously yeah for sure <laughs> and uh yeah you the listener check us out at uh, patreon.com slash burnout educator or uh, contact at burnout educator.com and until next time thank you so much mark hey i'm glad to be here thank you yes. bye guys <laughs> bye. <laughs>